everybody wants it but nobody wants to do it everybody wants it everybody knows we need it but nobody wants to do it when you speak to prophetic people to a prophetic apostolic house or company of people you've got to be very aware that you're not just speaking into the present tense you're speaking into the future and every time we gather like this and we have the opportunity to speak to leaders we are speaking to people i'm speaking to you but you are speaking to hundreds of people that will be speaking to hundreds of people that will be speaking to hundreds of people it's a ripple effect in the realm of the spirit so if we want to change the dynamics of culture, then we've got to be able to have a paradigm shift. Somebody say paradigm shift, paradigm shift. Isn't it interesting that when Jesus was about to be launched into ministry, the first miracle he did was changing water into wine. Very significant, significant miracle because it wasn't just an ordinary thing. God, the Bible says Jesus is the first and he is the last. He's the Alpha and the Omega. The first miracle was turning water into wine because for all the generations that had gone before Jesus, all they knew was the Word. They knew the water. John chapter 17 says, wash us with the water of your Word. See, everybody in generations gone past, and as we were growing up in our Pentecostal, Pentecostal, charismatic church life, we placed emphasis on the Word because heaven and earth will pass away, but the Word of God will endure forever. But in this move of God that God is releasing in the earth, He's mixing the Word and Spirit together, so we get a Spirit Word. Mm. So when God wants to touch the earth, God wants to move in the earth, he always mixes word and spirit together and the word became flesh and dwelt amongst us and we beheld the glory of God but when the word which was God became flesh and they crucified the flesh Jesus did not say father into your hands I commit my word he said, Father, into your hand I commit my spirit. So somewhere in the 33 years, the word became spirit. So when Jesus was about to be initiated into ministry, into his global platform, he turned water, which is word, into wine, which is spirit. If we're going to hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying, we've got to have a new wine paradigm you got to hear this you got to hear this a new wine paradigm so when Jesus turned the water into wine what was he saying he says there's a coming people that will be so filled of the word because Mary said to Mary representing the church Mary representing the church you're going to hear more about that tomorrow Mary representing the church she gave the instruction whatever he tells you to do do it that's the key in the realm of the spirit to do whatever God is calling you to do do not do what men want you to do do not do what your emotions are telling you to do you've got to do what the Holy Ghost is telling you to do because as many that as are led by the Spirit of God they are the sons of God you got to hear this you got to hear this so the Bible says Jesus said fill six water pots fill it to the brim now incidentally if you know anything about numbers the number six speaks about man fill man with the word to the brim if you want to have revival and not pouring of the Holy Ghost you got to have the word in you to the brim you got to catch this too many people are running after a cheap thrill we don't want to just fall out and cry and laugh and not walk out changed come on now we need change in our society we need change in our culture we need change in our community so we said fill it up to the room leaders my concern is that we know so much about everything but we don't know the word of God 
we know so much about how to how to to to, to manage things and we bring in secular world systems into the church but we don't know the word of god and the bible says in the book of amos the days are coming where there'll be a famine of the hearing of the word of the lord you've got to be full look at your neighbor say you've got to be full with the word you got to be filled with the word. Incidentally, in the book of Genesis chapter number 1 from verse number 2, the Spirit of the Lord hovered over the face of the deep. God is still looking for deep people to hover over. Come on, you cannot be shallow, you cannot be ankle deep, you cannot be waist deep, you cannot be knee deep. you got to be deep to the point where the river is taking you. My concern is that if leaders are not filled with the power of the Holy Ghost, how then shall we lead people? If you cannot take people to where you have not been yourself, you cannot be pointing into a direction that you do not know. So he turned the water into wine. He changed their paradigms. All they knew was the letter of the word. The law came by Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Because he's the first, he's also the last. So the last miracle that Jesus did before he went to the cross, does anybody know what he was? Peter cut off Malchus's ear. And Jesus picks up the ear and he puts it back into position. Can I prophesy to somebody? God is restoring the ear to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to His church. Have you ever noticed that people that cannot hear properly talk funny? Deaf people talk funny. And the church has been talking funny because we've been deaf and we could not hear that's why over and over in the book of revelation the spirit of the lord says to john let him who hath an ear hath an ear let him hear what the spirit of the lord says to his church when last as leaders have you heard what the spirit of the lord is saying to his church I'm not talking about running your fingers through the Bible and opening a scripture. I'm talking about when you lay before the Lord and the Lord says, this is the word for the season. This is the, the buzz phrase in the spirit. This is what I'm speaking to my church because if we are not hearing, we are not doing what he wants us to do. How can we lead God's people? How can we be song leaders? How can we be youth leaders? How can we be pastors? How can we be prophets? Is it just a title that we're hungry after? Or are we the real deal? Because in the realm of the spirit, I want to say it now, God does not count our success by the things we've done. He counts our successes, how heavy are we in the spirit what's your weight in the realm of the spirit not how many people you have under you not how many meetings you can preach not how many scriptures you know does heaven know you does hell know you how weighty are you in the realm of the spirit the Bible says in John chapter 15 that the husband man comes to the tree and the branches that do not produce, he cuts it back. And those that is producing, he cuts it back so it can produce more. You see, as you walk your life as a leader, you'll always be pruned. There'll be seasons of cutting back. There'll be seasons of, there was a season in my life where I just could not understand why God was pulling me back. You know, as leaders, we always want to run. And then I asked the Lord, Lord, why are you pulling me back? God says, because now, I'm, you're not just a preacher now, you're an arrow in my bow. And the further I pull you back, the further you're going to go. You see, the highest and tallest buildings have the deepest foundations. If you want to go high, you got to go low first. You got to go deep. You got to go deep. Look at your neighbor and say, you got to go 
Oh, come on now. Because if we want to see a true revival, true revival doesn't happen in these four walls. True revival happens in the schools. True revival happens in the street. Long before anyone knew my name, I was, in, I was 17 years old and 16 years old. Back in our school, we would have revivals where young people in our 45 minute break time would be screaming and rolling on the floor under the power of God. We have to shake them and say, come on, it's Matt's time now. It's Afrikaans time now. It's time to go. You know why? Because you're building in secret David established himself in secret you know, you've got to learn how to kill your bears and kill your lions uh, in secret before you go and everybody sees you kill Goliath in public your secret place is more important than what you do in the public place somebody talk to me Somebody, t I didn't wake up one morning and I didn't get anointed all by myself. Uh, there were years, and man of God, you know, there were years when there was no people and there was no building and there was no pulpit. Listen, many young people want to go into ministry because of fame and fortune. But I want to tell you something, you build your legacy in the spirit first. You've got to be weighty in the spirit first first many people are running up to ministry because they're thinking you got gonna have cameras in your face and you're gonna have people coming to listen to you preach it does not start there David had to learn to look after smelly sheep before he could touch the lives of people and if you want to be a true leader you got to smell of sheep if a leader is not smelling of his sheep then he's not a leader then he's there for himself and he's not there for the people God is weighing us on the scales, on the balances. Are we found wanting? Are we found wanting? You see, God doesn't count us. He weighs us. The last time David counted people, God sent destruction on the land. Don't measure your success with how many people are following you. It's of no consequences because the same people that follow you today and scream Hosanna, will be the same people that will say crucify him don't be fooled by the people around you don't be fooled when people say you're so awesome prophet zion you're so wonderful don't get high on people's opinions of you but if you know that you are known and loved by the almighty god and that he that has called you he's faithful to finish the thing that he has started you see we all have a race to run we all have a, I cannot run Dr. D's race, he cannot run my race, but we're running together to the finish line. There's one prize. It's not him getting the prize or me getting the prize. We get the prize together. We're not here to compete with each other. There's too much of competition taking place. Who can preach better? Whose department works better? Whether, whether we sing better than you, it does not matter. Those earthly things does not matter. But if we are fulfilling God's plan for our lives, for our mandate, we all have been given a mandate. Say mandate. Mandate. Mandate is simply an assignment with a timeline. Your mandate is your assignment with the timeline. That means whatever God is calling you to do has a timeline set to it. Hmm. Many people do the right thing at the wrong time and they miss God. Oh, come on. They do the right thing. They think, Lord, I'm doing the right thing. God called you today. But you say, God, let me go home and let me do what I need to do. Oh, you've got to catch this. The young rich ruler came to Jesus and Jesus gave him a set of instructions. He said to Jesus, I want to follow you. Jesus said, you let me truly see what's in your heart. Go and sell everything that you have and come and follow me. He shook his head and he went away. He said, you've asked of me a hard thing see many times God wants to use us and we want to be used by God but we want him to use us the way we want him to use us but when God calls you it's his will it's his kingdom coming into your life and his will be done in your life mm. see I'm a university graduate I'm not here because I'm a dropout and I couldn't do anything else with my life I chose to serve him 
Many people want to go into ministry because they failed that secular life and they can't do, can't make it in the secular world and they want to look at ministry as their next option. God is not an option. You either are called or you're not called. You either have it. We're not trying this. You don't mess with people's lives as leaders. You either know that you're called and if you know that you're called, you must be also willing to pay the price for that calling. Oh, but prophet Zion, the grace of God. No, no, no. The grace of God is there. But there's a price to pay for the anointing. Every anointing that you ever walk in, there's a price. I say it like this for every cup of glory. There's a cup of suffering that you've got to learn to drink from. You cannot be great without knowing the suffering that is tied to it. Why do we have to go through suffering? Because if he only gave you to drink from the cup of glory, it will go to your head. So he serves you a cup of suffering along with a cup of glory to remind you who's boss. 1 Kings chapter number 19. Verse number 1. And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done. And how he had slain all the prophets with the sword. And Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elijah saying, Unto Elijah saying so let the gods do to me and also if I make not your life as one of them by tomorrow about this time and when he saw that he arose and he ran for his life how many of you have been threatened how many of us are on the run? We know God has called us. But our marriages are falling apart. And God has called us and you are financially broke. And God has called us and your children are on drugs and crack and cocaine. And we are running from Jezebel. You see, when you know that you know that you know that you are called by God for greatness. Not only heaven knows that, hell knows it too. You see, all Jezebel did was make a threat. How many of you are running away from the threat? She hadn't, hadn't even did anything. She just threatened him, threatened to expose him, threatened to destroy him. Listen. Five, four, three, two, one. The title track, Supernatural, was born out of my desire to see stadiums full um, by the power of the Holy Ghost and to see people just come from uh, from different places. And the lyrics of the song is that. Uh, we see the nations calling out, millions of people hungry for Jesus. What a day when we see millions of people hungry for Jesus. We see them falling on their knees. Thousands are taking to the streets. Angels ascending and descending. Imagine you pull back your curtains one morning and there's an open heaven and you see angels just ascending and descending from the throne of God. And then the glory of heaven is coming down. Millions around the world are changing into the into the image of God. Natural sea, I believe, is going to change the world. It's a new sound. It's a sound of revival. It's a sound of reformation. It's a sound of God's glory 
sweeping through the nations of the earth. And the Bible says, the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord like the waters cover the sea. One of my other favorite songs is, fill the earth with your awesome power. And it goes that is from the north to the south, let your glory cover. just releasing a song we are releasing God's song over the nation we are speaking into into airways we are speaking over cities we are speaking over territories and God is releasing a new breed of passionate worshipers that will worship him in spirit and in truth That generations that will come after us will be singing what God has placed in their hearts. Are you ready? We are the people that will bring the sound. Are you ready to bring it? I am. Are you ready for the supernatural? We are. Come on, let's just get into the glory. Let's lift up new sounds, the frequency of heaven. Let's begin to pierce the atmosphere with a thunderous sound. that we can never touch God's heart if we cannot touch his heart through praise and worship. It takes a strong man to fall on his face and worship something that he cannot see. But we know that the power of praise and worship not only releases the glory of God on the earth, it also has the power to unlock the heavenlies. Just is everything that I preach, it's my message, it's, it's, it's my message to the world that there's a generation that God is raising up that, that will, 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 will become everything that He has in His heart. This is that generation that the Bible spoke about, that will see dead raised, that will see blind eyes open, that will see the cripples walk. And I believe that we are that people. This is that. Woo! Here we go. Thousands of people running into the space with hearts full of fire. The vision been lifted up to another place. We're going higher. Thousands of people running into the place with hearts full of fire. The vision been lifted up to another place. We're going. We're taking the vision. We're taking the vision to the. When we broke into, we made.
generations that will come after us will be singing what God has placed in their hearts. Are you ready? We are the people that will bring the sun. Are you ready to bring it? I am. Are you ready for the supernatural? We are. Come on, let's just get into the glory. Let's lift up new sounds, the frequency of heaven. Let's begin to pierce the atmosphere with a thunderous sound. It's time for Africa. I declare it's time for South Africa. I declare that our cities are erupting everywhere from the north to the south, to the east to the west with the spirit of revival. Get ready, get ready, get ready. God is about to shake the city. God is about to shake the earth. Kenako, now is the